Hello and welcome to another episode of the SciShow Talk Show. Today we have with me my friend Peter Winkler. Apparently I sing your name. Peter. I sing your name too. Oh, that's lovely. Hey, Green. <laughs> What do you do here at SciShow, Peter? I uh, run the graphics for SciShow. Yes. So today, Peter has come in with some interesting science things for us to discuss. So right now, uh, the world of prosthetics has uh, come out with a self-healing uh, skin. So, so like that would go on top of a fake armor leg? It could. Yes, yeah. they could go on like the housings of, uh, of wires and buildings. Oh, right. So that if it so were to get cut, could, yeah, it, it would, would uh, go back together. So when my cat chews up my computer cord, it would just, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. And everything would be okay. So let's say you're a robotic soldier from the future. They built me poorly. <laughs> and um, if you were to, say, fight a person, I'm just going to pull a name out of the air, uh, John Connor. Okay. And you... I can, I can, I'm starting to feel... The part. I'm starting to feel my endoskeleton. And then you get into like a shotgun battle with him, right. and then you know half of your skin is gone. Yes. So now at this point, it'd be good to have some self healing skin. If I were to get into a shotgun battle as a normal human, I would probably want to have some self healing skin. <laughs> Which I guess I do. Than, yeah. I guess I do have self healing skin. Yeah, yeah. Which is nice. Yeah, that is good. <laughs> the, di the difference between that and uh, like your own skin and yes. this skin is that it uh, heals in about, uh, about 30 minutes. Um, that would be better. Yeah, it actually bonds together that quick. So, I mean, if you're talking about just polymers sticking together, like Silly Putty, mm. like you take Silly Putty apart and then you push it back together and then it's Silly Putty. So what's the difference? Like, why don't they just smooth out some Silly Putty and put it over Arnold Schwarzenegger? Well, it's a little bit different because it, it um, you know, with Silly Putty, you would, you would need for someone to, like, you know, actually, you know, mold it back together. Oh, right. This, right. this okay. if you were to put them next to each other, they actually have um, positive and negative uh, bonds that are going against each other that actually will... Like reforming chemical bonds. Right. Okay. And they um, it can take on electricity. And so... Right, so it can conduct. Do you know how they do that? How they... They added... Um, I think it's... Uh, they added nickel into it. So like little... Which little pieces of nickel. Mm -hmm. So with the little pieces of nickel, um, it can it can also be set up as a sensor. So the closer those, uh, like those nickel elements are together... So like if you compressed it, mm -hmm. it would be able to tell that it was being compressed. Right. And the conductivity would change. Right. That's and, awesome. Yeah. It's pretty interesting, especially if you were to have like a prosthetic arm or something. Right. Because then it could even sense that how far you are, you're twisting. Like if this is... Right. You could know if your arm was bent or unbent. Mm -hmm. Or you can know if you're touching something. You can know how hard you're touching something. Right. Be able to actually like have a surrogate for the sense of touch. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah, I and mean, who knows what they can do with it, you know, as time goes by. You might yeah. be able to actually be able to feel. Yeah, if you can integrate with the nervous system, yeah. which is, ooh, that's where you start to get into Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yeah. This robot army from the future stuff. I know. <laughs> Scary stuff, but, but good for people who, uh, yeah. who need it. You know? That's really cool. Yeah. Thank welcome. you. You are welcome. <laughs> and now we move on <laughs> to today's edition of Stump Hank. Will Saturn's rings ever disappear and turn into a moon? outside of Saturn itself. So the stability of Saturn's rings. I know that Saturn's rings are made of ice. I know that Saturn's rings move around, that they're not static. They're, they're moving pieces that are bumping into each other. So if they're floating around out there, you would think that eventually they would start to clump. And they probably do already clump to a certain extent because everything has gravity. Even very small objects have gravity. So you would think they would start to clump together, and if they clump together more, they would run into each other, and the friction would increase, and it would melt eventually, and then it would... I don't know how much mass is mm -hmm. in Saturn's rings. I certainly don't know. But they would clump together, and if enough clump together, then it would melt and it would form a sphere because of gravity. So I'm going to say yes... Actually, no. Ah! The, the rings that are uh, made out of uh, water ice are actually not dense enough to actually go and create um, something to like accrete, that. To accrete, yeah. So the, the gravitational effects of Saturn, like, mm -hmm. and there's also the, um, the tidal forces. Right, that, between Saturn and other moons? Right, between yeah. the other, yeah. Um, they, the way that they orbit actually prevents anything from actually oh. forming itself. So it's, the, it's, the, it's the, the effects of Saturn's other moons mm -hmm. that keep clumps from forming, basically. Pretty much, yeah. And I do know that there are actually little bands in Saturn's rings where there is no ice because there are sort of little moonlets 
in there that collect up with the gravity, with their gravity. They collect up little, all the little pieces of ice in that area. Mm. But I guess that makes sense. Yeah. I guess that makes sense. I was wrong. <laughs> well, now it is time for uh, something creepy and crawly oh, to I join can't. us here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Apparently, Peter, you're going to be our, uh, our gross animal expert. You know, as long as it's not spiders, I have a terrible arachnophobia. Is that for all arachnids? Pretty much. So how would you feel about a scorpion? Uh, not good. Okay, well, let's bring out the scorpion. <laughs> you'll be fine. You'll, you'll be fine. Oh, okay, good. And now we have Jesse from Animal Wonders visiting with us again with another strange and mystical creature. <laughs> Underneath the coconut. Like, which coconut is it under? Surprise! It's under this one. <laughs> All right, unveil the coconut, please. I'm going to keep my hands well back. Hello. What do we have here? This is Professor Claw, the Emperor Scorpion. <laughs> Professor Claw. Sounds like something from, like, a G.I. Joe. Yeah. Well, isn't it, wasn't it Dr. Claw from Inspector Gadget? Yes. With the cat? <laughs> <It was. laughs> that metal hand? <laughs> yeah. So this thing will, uh, well, will this kill me? <laughs> if, you, if you get stung, no, no. And actually you can tell if a scorpion is more dangerous by the size of their claws there. So his claws are pretty big. I would call that big. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the bigger they are, the less poisonous they are. The okay. less venomous they well, are. Well, then I'm not worried at all. You should so be a little worried. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It'll feel about like a, a bee sting. Oh, okay. You won't have the stinger actually in you, but it will throb and it'll burn and it'll hurt for Well, you know, now a I just want to try that. <laughs> if it's just a bee sting, I can then for the rest of my life I can say I was stung by an emperor scorpion. To does say that, you're not, stung by does a that scorpion? not sound cool to you? <laughs> I mean, I'm not I actually going to do it. You would, you, I don't know. You would increase by a badass by at least by 10%. 10% Oh, it's more moving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to point out I want to point Is out that she has a glove. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's going yeah. towards you. It's, I'm just going to head on back. <laughs> Yeah, now my, my badass level has significantly decreased. <laughs> I felt like video. as soon as he started moving, he got way bigger. Was he that was just bigger. my imagination? He will curl up in defensive mode, and he'll actually become smaller when okay. he's a little bit nervous. So his plates actually extend. Mm -hmm. Yep, and you can actually see on the side there, if you felt that gray skin on the side, I'm Which not I asking you do. to. <laughs> You can, it feels like velvet. It's very, very oh. soft. So they can actually expand and shrink using that soft skin there. Neat. Well, what, what's going in there? Are they filling up with air? They'll then? fill up with food. Oh. Yeah, and the female will it. have to expand for, to hold all of her eggs inside as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, stay away from me. <laughs> he seems very well behaved. Yeah. Scorpions do have personalities. And we actually have a... Uh, um, Professor Claw and Mrs. Black share an enclosure. <laughs> oh. So um, Mrs. Black actually is not as fun to bring out on shows because <laughs> she's, she's a bit grouchier. <laughs> so they do actually have Interesting. Are they the same personalities. species? Personalities, they are. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> she's pretty oh, good. Oh, oh, she's pretty oh, oh, good. <laughs> you think you have to go to Thailand to get like this sort of action? Actually, that's probably way off. Where's where are these? Where are they from? These guys are from Africa. From Africa. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, there you See go. how he holds his claws up in front of him as he goes. What is that for? <laughs> Just to keep him out of the way. Oh. And he, <laughs> <laughs> he also has really small hairs. If you look really closely. You can see all of those, yeah. they're almost like copper colored hairs. Mm -hmm. Now they're not actually hairs like our hair. It's made of the same stuff that makes their exoskeleton, the so chitin. it's part of their skeleton. Mm -hmm. And if you blow on them, Whoa, what was that? They can feel it. Are you going to go hide? I want to go in my <laughs> yes. pineapple. What? Where are you going? Are you coming toward me again? But how what? many legs do you see? Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't know if the claws count as legs. They don't. What? It would be an arachnid then. Yep. yep. Yep, just like a spider. Just like a spider. So it's basically a spider, but way scarier. Spider, crab, wasp put together. Spider, crab, wasp. Yeah. Oh, why man. did why did nature do that? <laughs> because it's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. <laughs> well, Professor Claw, thank you very much for being here with us on this SciShow. Wow! <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> SciShow Talk Show. And Jesse from Animal Wonders, thank you as well. Thank Their you website is animalwonders.org. 
and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Sorry to subject you to Professor Claw, Peter, but thank you for joining us on today's episode of SciShow Talk Show. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>